Hey guys, welcome back to Five Things. Today we're talking about April Diaz's Redefining the Role of the Youth Worker. This is an amazing book because rarely do you find a youth ministry book that has momentum that flows all the way through. Even though this book is small, it's very powerful in its message. Most youth ministry books flow like the attention span of a youth worker. We're good for about 70% of the time, then we kind of fall off when we get tired or the caffeine wears out. Not this book, it flows all the way through. One of the best points of this book, I think, is the way she describes what she calls lockbox faith. And what that means to her is, sometimes our students, when they graduate from our ministry, they take, their, they take their Bibles and they put it in a box and they put it away until they need it, until they have children to come back to church. By her agenda, she says, come forth with a full manifesto of ministry to say, hey, let's get you involved in the church and using your faith so you will not lock it away. You're so ingrained in you, you will use your faith throughout your life. A second aspect of, of the book that is really amazing is the way she talks about integration in the church, in that when they, the, the book describes her church's path of hiring a youth worker, but they didn't want to hire a youth director. They wanted to hire a pastor of integration into the church of ministry so they could move forward to show the students that were there. No, 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 the faith that we are entrusting you with is not something that you are to keep to yourself and we're not, hand, we're not hiring an advanced camp counselor to guide you through games and things. We're guiding someone to walk you through your faith, to integrate you into the life of the church and then into your world so it becomes a part of who you are and your passion. The scriptural basis that she works for, for the, a lot of this book is 2 Timothy 2.2 where it talks about taking the faith that's been entrusted to you and entrusted to others. In the same way that this works here, she makes a definition of saying, we are called to have, make disciples that know how to make disciples, not keep their faith to themselves, but how can they actively reach out through their words and through their actions and their lives of moving forward to make disciples by what we have taught them and what they are learning and are teaching us. Another great aspect of this book is where she talks about refilling vision buckets. The vision of the youth ministry should be should already align with what the church's vision is. Then how do we adequately meet with our student leaders and our youth adult leaders to keep their actions aligned with the vision that we have for our youth ministry, whether it's through monthly meetings as a group or monthly meetings as individuals? How do we keep that going and refilling those buckets to keep that progress going on? I think the most important chapter of this book is where she talks about leadership in that she gives an adequate breakdown of what leadership is to the leader. And she makes a great definition of this. Out of the 100% cycle of a youth worker, the 50% of your leadership should be based on self-leadership. Am I a learner? And where am I going in my growth of faith and also my growth as a leader? Second under that comes, how am I leading up to the people above me to show them I'm a leader, but also here's what's going on in our ministry and here's how we're leading our leaders next step under that is how am I leading parallel to other area my peers in ministry on staff to show them how can we integrate together to make a path of ministry that flows so we can all communicate and be moving toward this path of what our church calls discipleship and the smallest percentage the five percent of that is leading down to our volunteers because as we are growing in our faith and as we are growing as leaders they will follow along with that as gravity pulls along and to say hey how can we grow because we want to be like that person and then all the other stuff we have to teach at our individual meetings or group meetings is all easy because they're already bought into the vision that we have and where our church is going. Thanks a lot, guys. I look forward to your comments and see you later.